Hello guys, you're welcome to the fifth video in this series. Um, in the last video, this was what we um, created. We had the uh, player moving around, okay? And so everything seems to be working as expected. Uh, so in this video, we're going to be creating the player bullet, okay? So we're going to be making the player shoot bullets on the screen. So quickly, I'm going to create a new file. And I name that bullet.h. Cool. Um, so I'm going to declare a class bullet right there. Um, so public and private. All right. Uh, so this is the constructor. Bullet takes in an uh, int angle. Or uh, I should use a float right there. So it takes a float angle. Um, float x. And uh, y, pretty much. And then three functions. We have the init, update, and uh, render. So this one initializes uh, my. This one initializes my bullet. Uh, this one updates it, and this one renders it to the screen. So the carpet we have the x, y, uh, radius. We also need a uh, angle, uh, px, dy. Uh, we also need the speed. Oh, sorry. So we need the speed of my, uh, this one, it takes the speed of my uh, bullet, of the bullet. So now that we have that, let's create the cpp bar. So let the cpp right there. So we're going to include the bullet, uh, the file right there. Uh, here we have a close angle, close x, close y. Okay, I uh, have to initialize this right here. Oh, and I think I have to go back here and put this one up here. Uh, if I don't do that, I'm gonna get some weird error messages. So uh, let's do that. So angle, angle, yeah, um, I forgot the color. Okay. Um, also going to initialize the X and the Y. So there we go. So you've initialized the bullet. Uh, bullet. So we have a uh, bullet init right here. And we want to call the init function inside our constructor quickly. So for bullet update. Uh, update right there for bullet render to screen. Cool. So for my init, we're gonna do the uh, angle. So we have to convert the angle to radians. We're gonna be putting the angles as degrees inside here, but when we use it, we have to convert it to radians. So let's make a function to do that. Uh, radians. And uh, we take a angle, and it's just as simple as doing return 3.1415 multiplied by angle. Actually, sorry, angle multiplied by 3.1415 divided by uh, 180, and that will give us the angle in radians. So, right here, we're gonna do um, so we need speed. I'm gonna set the speed of my of my bullets to 20. Um, so the dx is gonna be the angle, uh, the cosine of angle. Let me report the math library, the math function. Uh, let's just see math right there. Uh, so this is gonna be the cosine of angle, and the d y is gonna be the sine of angle. And you have to multiply this by the speed and multiply this by the speed just like that and so for my update i'm going to do x plus equals dx y oh, y plus equals to y good so to render this is very simple oh, i forgot to set the radius so radius uh our radius is going to be say four i guess that should be a good number uh, so I'm going to do here, draw, field, 
I'll do a few circle. It's gonna be a circle. Other. Uh, so I'm gonna include the other group five library right here. Uh, the other group five header. Uh, I can't type this actually. I don't know why. So I'm gonna fill the circle. Uh, so it's gonna be x, y, radius, L map, RGB, F. So this is gonna be uh, this is white, I guess. This is gonna be white. Uh, I think that should be it. I guess what's the error coming from? Uh, draw field circle. Oh, I haven't. In a, I should include the primitive uh, instead. Sorry. <coughs> I should include the primitive instead. Right? There we go. Uh, draw circle again. Just put an outline over it. We're gonna draw straight to the same location. Uh, radius. We're gonna do. This time we're gonna change the color. Uh, so we're gonna use red. You know everything like that. We're gonna set this to maybe four or something. Yeah, maybe four. Let's try four and see how it looks. Okay. So this is all we need uh, to have for our bullet. So let's go to our player class quickly. Uh, I'm gonna include here a uh, uh, vector. So we're gonna have a vector of bullets now. I also need to include the bullet for the flash. A bullet of age right there. Okay. So here I'm gonna make a std vector of bullet. I'm gonna call it bullets right there. So we're gonna my player the cpp and in our init function, we're gonna call it uh okay. So the first thing we need to do is go back to my player edify for a minute and add a file right here so we can enable our, our player to fire a bullet. Right here we're gonna go back to our update uh, no handle input. Okay, we're gonna add firing because we have keys down. Uh, so add our key state Allegro key. Space, yeah, let's use that. So, before that, let's initialize our firing right there. Okay, so we set everything there to false, and uh, so if the key is done, firing will be set to true, if not, firing will be set to false, and that's that. Um, so, the next thing we need to do, I guess, um, is to let's see, all right, so we've added our bullets. So, the next thing we need to do is to go to our update. Uh, is our update right here? So we do right here if we are I mean, sorry, if firing. So if we're firing our bullet, we should hit the spacebar key. We're gonna make a function that's gonna say fire bullet pretty much right there. So I was quickly make that function right here, your function declaration fire bullet, and then let's go back to our CPP file. And somewhere down the update, wait, clear, fire, fire bullet. And so we're just going to add to the bullet list dot place back. If you use push back, if you want, but I say that place back is more efficient, so I'm going to use that. So I'm going to make a new bullet. Uh, the angle is zero, and the x is, uh, let's see, uh, the x is going to be clear as x and clear as y. So we're going to give the bullet the position of the player, that's where it's going to start from, okay? Um, that's, all for, that's all for the fire bullet, so if you fire it, fire bullet. Uh, now the next thing we need to do is to update our uh, bullet list, so let's do up, up to bullet, to bullets, so this is going to, so bullet update, pretty much that's going to update our bullet right there. Now, I should go back to the bullet class and quickly because whenever we uh, fire our bullets, we want to remove them when they get out of the screen. Okay, so we don't want the bullets to accumulate too much. So, whenever they get out of the screen, we want to uh, remove them. So, what we're going to do is go to our bullet.h class and we're going to have uh, remove. We're just going to return. Uh, it's going to return x. It's greater than or equal to, uh, let's see. This is greater than or equal to, I'll get, okay, I think I need the Allegro 5 header right here. Include Allegro 5, special Allegro 8, right there. 
Okay. So we're gonna have L get display with L get current display. This one. Okay, so if it's greater than that uh, or um, y is greater than L get display height. So we're gonna pass in L get current right there or x is less than or equal to zero I mean x is less than zero or y is less than zero so I think that should be it I guess so if any of this uh, is true then it means we're out of bounds so we should remove our board so we're gonna come right here and make an uh, another loop uh, or to um, bullet equals to bullet stop begin. Alright. Uh, begin right there. Oh. Okay. Um, bullets bullets does not equal to bullets the end. Right there. Plus bullets. bullets. Uh, I can't seem to be able to type. I'm not sure why. All right, so we have an error right here. Uh, let's see, what do I put that? Okay, nice. So I'm gonna be like if bullet remove. So if we need to, uh, if we if, if we can remove the bullet, we're gonna do uh, bullets that erase. Uh, bullet and then uh, pretty much we're gonna do bullets minus minus just like that. So this is gonna remove all our bullets. So you can see remove uh, bullets or something. Uh, Alright. So the next thing we should do is to render. So for auto bullet in our bullets pretty much. Uh, so we're gonna do bullet and, uh, and that's that. And lastly, let's let's pair of our bullets when we dispose. So we're gonna do our two bullets again. Uh, bullet, bullets. So this one, this one is uh for cleaning up, for cleaning up after the game is over. If we still have any bullets inside the bullet list, so we're gonna delete the bullet and then we're gonna call bullets up here. And that is that. So let's test this out and make sure it's working before we continue. Uh, so it's compiling right now. Let's wait for a minute. And we get an error. Okay, so what's the error? Oh, it says undefined reference to the bullet class. So I forgot to add it to the CMake list of text right here. So let's add that CMP. And uh, let's compile and see if we get any other errors. Okay, so for now we don't have errors and we can fire bullets. But there's a problem right here because you see we fire so many bullets at once and uh, it looks like our player is firing some sort of lasers or something like that. So we want to have some sort of time interval between uh, uh, when we fire a bullet. So how do we do this? Well, there are various ways to do this and uh, I'm going to use some sort of timer. So this is a, I'm going to use a regular timer right here. I'm going to name it timer. Okay. I'm also going to need an allegro event queue for that event queue right there. Okay, so cool. Uh, let's go back to the player the CPP and we're going to initialize those. So I'm going to call event queue because they are create event queue timer because they are create timer just like that. And the timer is going to be 1.0 divided by 5. Because we want this to, uh, we want this timer to fire every. Uh, if you remember when I was creating my game, we could use an Allegro timer. So the timer uh, basically takes in speed per second. So uh, it's gonna. So right now this timer is gonna fire uh, once every uh, five times every second. So it's gonna fire five times every second. So we want to give. Uh, we want to be able to fire five bullets in a second, basically. So that's what that means. So I'm gonna register 
event source to the event queue. Uh, it will get timer event source timer right there. And before I forget, I like to once I allocate objects, I should be allocated. So event queue, uh, event queue right there. And destroy timer. So make sure you deallocate your objects as soon as you create them so that you don't forget. All right. So the next thing we do next is uh, to register our event queue to the timer. And uh, so in our firing, now we have to check. So in firing, uh, we now check if, sorry. Uh, so basically we want to check if our timer has not started. So if timer, uh, it will get timer started. Okay, so pass in the timer. So if the timer has not started, then we want to start the timer. Basically, it'll start timer. Timer right there. And then the next thing we want to do is to fire bullet right there. And another thing I'm gonna do here is uh it'll uh if it'll get uh next event using the event queue. I'm gonna pass in the event we're gonna create in a minute. Event. Pass that to the event queue right there. Uh, so basically, I'm saying that if there's an event in the event queue, then fire the bullet because we know the event is a uh, is a timer event basically. Okay. Uh, so if we're firing and we've not started the timer, then we start a timer and we fire the bullet. Okay. Uh, then, if, uh, so we now check if it's time to fire another bullet, then we fire, and if it's not, then nothing happens. So another thing is to make sure that when we're not firing, we stop our timer. If we don't do this, then it's going to keep generating events, and when you want to, uh, when you want to, uh, when you start firing again, all the things you just fire on and on and on, and uh, you don't want that. So this is how we're going to do this. Uh, so let's check this and see if it's working as expected. Let's run our code and see what happens. All right, so the game is running. And now you see that uh, our uh, code is kind of controlled. I mean, we, we now have finer controls over uh, how much we spawn at once. As you can see, we cannot have more than five bullets on the screen at the same time. And if you want that to change, uh, I think the speed of my uh, bullet is kind of very fast, okay? So let me reduce that to maybe like 15, all right? So, you know, don't even go too fast. Yeah, I think this is a moderate size, so, yeah. So, now, some of you might be wondering why I didn't just um, set X plus equals to DX and, you know, forget about this, and why am I even using angles and stuff in the first place? So let me show you the use of all these things right here. So say you wanted to have uh, maybe not just one bullet, but like two bullets on the screen. So the way you would do that, for example, maybe you're like, uh, maybe uh, you're giving the player some sort of power up and uh, so you want the player to fire bullets at different angles. So the way you're gonna do that is simple. We're gonna go to the fire bullet. Um, I'm gonna show you an example of what I'm trying to say. Uh, so uh, no, there's another one right here. So this one I'm going to say goes uh, minus 20 degrees, and this one goes 20 degrees. So if I run my program now, every time I fire bullets, you're going to see these two are going to fire at different angles, something like this, okay? So you can see it looks kind of cool, and uh, it's very simple, we're just using the angle. So for each of the bullets we add, you see the, uh, that's the use of the angle right there. Uh, so you can play with that and see, but generally, for this game to be fair, I think it's just... Uh, good enough to have only one uh, angle on the screen, uh, to have only one bullet on the screen. But if you want to have multiple bullets like that, then this is how you do it, okay? So you just use the angle, and uh, you calculate the angle, and then you can set your DX and DY multiplied by the speed based on that. And I think that is all for this video. I hope, this vi I hope you understand all these things. If you don't, please watch the video again, and I'll uh, see you guys in the next one.